Hi folks, it's Switchback. I have been backpacking since I was a kid, back when we used those archaic external frame backpacks. And I had a Jansport, it was green, I don't know what model exactly it was. But my dad got me my first internal frame backpack when I was in high school, and they were pretty new on the scene then. I opted to use the old external frame for a long time, just not really understanding the internal frame and not strapping stuff on the outside so much and so forth. In 2012, I bought myself my own first internal frame backpack on a Mega Pro Deal when I worked at REI. If you're not familiar with Pro Deals, they're something that you can get when you work in the industry and you get extreme discounts on gear. Brands do this so that you can test things out and really speak to it when you're trying to sell it, basically. Since then, I have upgraded my internal frame pack which was then the Flash, the REI Flash 52. Now I have the REI Flash 55, and I also have a Gregory Diva. Somewhere along the way, less than 10 years ago, I donated that Jansport backpack. I regret it. Not only for the nostalgia, and of course it would be fun to show you the backpack that I've been using since I was a kid, but I'm actually considering going back to an external frame pack. So why is that? Well, first let's talk about why we went to internal frames in the first place. Internal frame backpacks will stay closer to your body and to your center of gravity, which is really helpful when you're going up steep terrain or you're scrambling and they shift around less as a result. Also, an internal frame carries the weight lower versus being top heavy like an external frame pack. Generally, they have a larger internal capacity than an external frame pack, which means that all of your gear is inside and protected against the elements, you know, against snags from branches and uh, vines and things like that against the rain and that can be especially good if you're doing some off-trail traversing depending on the pack you have more adjustability and in some you can even bend the frame to better fit your body in some aspects a, an internal frame pack is easier to travel with you know you can stick it into a duffel but an external frame pack you can take apart the frame and put that all into a duffel which can actually be a little bit easier now if you are say back Packing through Europe and you're using a lot of storage lockers an internal frame pack is definitely going to win out on that it's going to be much easier to stick in one of those some of the drawbacks of an internal frame backpack are because it is so close to your body you're going to have a much sweatier back and that could potentially even increase your chafing risk you also need to lean forward more in order to effectively transfer the weight to your lower body it can be difficult to strap extra items to the outside because first of all, they're not really designed for that. They don't have a lot of attachment points. Things being outside of it can block, you know, zippers and, pa and pockets and other access points. And it can easily throw off the balance of an internal frame backpack. Most internal frame backpacks don't handle a heavy load very well. And there are a handful of models that do that are also very heavy themselves, but external frame backpacks are much better at carrying a heavy load. In general, external frame packs have simply fallen out of fashion with the exception of the hunting community because a lot of hunters, of course, are carrying out their kills. Most of the backpacks that you see that are an external frame are clearly geared toward hunters with a few exceptions, of course. An external frame backpack may be ideal if you do have to carry a heavier load, if say you have kids or other people with you where you have to carry some of their gear as well. So why am I considering the switch to an external frame backpack? I really like the organization of an external frame backpack. My Gregory Diva has a lot of pockets, but it's also over five pounds. Having all of that compartmentalization means less digging through the main compartment to access something I didn't anticipate needing to access while I'm on the trail. I like the way that an external frame carries the weight and that you get better ventilation on your back. I tend to run hot. I like the ways that you can adjust an external frame backpack. And of course, it depends on the design, but some of them you can adjust the straps up and down down, you can lengthen or shorten the frame, you can move the straps in or out, but in general they can fit a broader audience than a simple straightforward internal frame pack. Also, the sleeping bag compartment of an external frame pack is actually designed to carry a full-size sleeping bag, whereas the ones in internal frame packs in general seem to be designed 
only for the most ultralight quilts. An external frame pack is also less likely to get stolen if you have to leave it outside of a store or somewhere else where it's just gonna be out and someone might see it and be opportunistic and steal it. Most are pretty durable and you can frankly beat the snot out of them. If you're new to backpacking, don't be afraid to go the external frame route because especially if you are starting out, a lot of your gear is probably not ultralight or top of the line and you want to be able to comfortably carry those heavy your items. Plus, when I'm out on the trail and I see an external frame backpack on someone, it is a total conversation piece. I absolutely want to talk to that person. So where can you find an external frame backpack? Well, if you want to go new, the most common model that I've been able to find is the Kelty Trekker 65, which currently runs about $250, which I think is increased over where it used to be probably because it is the most abundantly available and really in many places the only one that's available. It used to be that external frame backpacks were less expensive and I think part of that is that the newer technology has really been focused on internal frame backpacks. That said, I think that that increase also has to do with the novelty because external frame packs really aren't out there as much. I was able to find a couple from Alps Mountaineering, the Rock 34, which is currently running $122 as of filming, and the Zion 64 liter, which is running $129 as of filming. Instead of going that route, I took to eBay and Facebook Marketplace. I also looked in thrift stores, but really had no luck there. I started looking at backpacks online used, and I was hoping to find one like my Jansport, but just really couldn't find any out there until of course I actually purchased a different one. Eventually I settled on the Kelty Yukon Reg 2900. I don't know if it's Reg or Reg or what it stands for, but this is her. She doesn't have a name yet. I decided on this for multiple reasons. For one, it's kind of in between youth and adults. So it's kind of geared toward teenagers. A lot of people that are selling these are former Boy Scouts. And I have a 15 inch torso, so a lot of adult packs don't come short enough for me. The waist belt and the shoulder straps are both big enough to go around my girthy body. But I like how adjustable this is. It goes from 13 to 19 inch torso length, which is a huge range. I like that it's designed to stay open with this bar right here, which can of course be collapsed down as well. And I could remove it to shave some weight if I wanted to. This pack is a lot easier to get in and out of, but it also means that it's more vulnerable to rain. So I will definitely be getting a rain cover to go over this. The biggest downside I found so far is that my bear vault does not fit, at least with this bar in place. And so I would have to strap that to the outside if I used that one. But my other one, which is similar to the UDAP NOFAD bear, um, mine's a Frontiersman, it's discontinued, but it would fit in here just fine. I also purchased a couple of padded straps to put onto the waist belt here because this one is just not gonna be big enough to go all the way around the way that I would like. I'll probably be adding some pockets to these or at least using my waist belt, which I use anyway. This is one of the few vintage packs here too that also considered a hydration reservoir, but the way that this is designed, it is horizontal and not as large as I would like. I think I paid like 40 bucks for this, pretty good. I still need to clean it. You can still see that there are like some spider web stuff and all that on here, but I am really excited to try this one out. See what you can find out there. I tried a couple of other packs. There was one that a guy who was the complete opposite of me, he was really tall and really skinny. He was selling one and it didn't fit me obviously, but he was ready to just give it to me because he just wanted the space back in his garage. If I had known of someone for sure that I could give it to, I absolutely would have taken it. A little bonus tip if you do decide to go with an external frame pack is to carry some zip ties because if one of these cotter pins like these here breaks, you are out of luck. And there are a lot of these little pins on here. It's just part of the design of an external frame pack. Now, if you are in the market for a backpack and you're really not sure what to look for, I have this video to really help you to understand what to look for. Thank you so much for watching. If you got value, like and subscribe, and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.